little Terame here, and I have a Blu-ray horror pack for November this time to unbox, as it came in today. Did uh, the DVD one the other day, and uh, as I explained in all these, the horror pack is a subscription service you can sign up for to get four random Blu-rays or DVDs. Um, you can sign up for both packages, as they will have different movies in the Blu-ray as opposed to what would be in the DVD pack. You sometimes get exclusives. Or sometimes little box sets, steel books, stuff like that. Sometimes some um, signed things, you'll get indie film stuff. So you would go to horrorpack.com to sign up for that and look at what they have to offer. Um, if you choose to do a longer period of time right off the bat, you'll save money doing it that way, but you'll have to pay the chunk out at once, which the website would explain everything like that to you and all. So I've been getting these for several months now. And um, I've been pretty happy. It's a good way to start a collection or to add to a collection. And even if you get duplicates or maybe sometimes upgrades, sometimes in the Blu-rays, I get something I had on DVD, but it's an upgrade. Um, it's something you could trade or sell or something. You know, it, it's not like you'd really be losing much of anything because these do have a bit of a value to them. Um, and it'll be sometimes 80s titles. I haven't really got any too many before the 80s other than in this one uh, box set that I had. But uh, you'll get some 90s titles, and you'll get some more current ones. You know, maybe not like the most current as far as big movies, but ones that were kind of big maybe a few years ago you might get. So I think it's worthwhile, really. So this month, um, and I opened the box to, you know, save from having to fuss with it on here. We got, come to me. My first movie is... Creepshow 2 on Blu-ray. Wow. Now, I do know that I think it's Arrow Video has a really nice Creepshow 2 set out, but I don't actually have this on Blu-ray. And uh, the last couple, I had a Stephen King Blu-ray in the last one, um, so that's pretty good. I got uh, Firestarter on Blu-ray, I believe, or maybe it was, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Children of the Corn, that's what it was. Okay, so most of y'all know what Creepshow and Creepshow 2 are. These are the ones that kind of paired up George Romero with Stephen King. They even had the magazine that came out. Um, and it was kind of done comic style, like old Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, stuff like that. And these were it's sort of an anthology film, as it has little things. But you'll see the little comic -y pictures and stuff come up. And um, there's sort of like this little segment with a little boy and, you know, stuff going on with him in between the, you know, or at the beginning and the end. And the things are done kind of like, you know, little sections. Uh, this is the one that has the chief, um, what do they call them? Chief something. The Indian thing. It's like, it looks like a totem outside the general store and he kind of comes to protect them because they, they get robbed and the owner gets killed, but he'd always taken really good care of this totem thing. So it kind of comes and gets revenge for the store owner. Uh, this one also has the hitchhiker episode where the lady hits the hitchhiker on the way back from her little liaison, her affair. And, uh, it's, you know, thanks for the ride. And, um, let's see, the other one, I can't remember, let's see. The rotting creep himself is back with three new gruesome tales of horror that will make your skin crawl. A cigar store wooden Indian comes to avenge the store owner's brutal murder at the hands of three punks and old chief wooden head. See, that's what I was going to say it was. Then four teenagers become the target of a terrifying man-eating oil slick in the raft. The chills continue with the hitchhiker, the frightening tale of a woman who keeps running into and over the same mutilated man on the lonely road. Prepare for a terrifying roller coaster ride from the master of horror. Oh, that raft one is one of my favorites. And that actually has Paige Hannah, which a lot of you know Daryl Hannah. Well, this is her redheaded sister that's in that one. And uh, that one does have a little bit of nudity and stuff in it. And that's a pretty good one. That's the one where the teenagers, they kind of park on that beach and they swim out to that raft thing. And then they realize there's sort of this big slick looking, I don't know what exactly it would be. Um, kind of sticky like tar and it comes up in the cracks and the raft and everything and, and kind of gets on the people and it it kind of disintegrates their skin um and you know some of these have sort of twist endings they you know kind of like uh even tales from the dark side used to do tales from the crypt episodes stuff like that so it's a lot of fun and it's some of my favorite anthologies out there and i'm kind of stoked to get this on blu-ray actually i mean i still have the dvd of it but that's a really good movie and again, like I was talking about with upgrades and stuff like that, that would be another example. Okay, so my next one. Knuckle Bones. Unrated Horror Pack Limited Edition. Roll Them Bones. So here's one of the limited editions. 
and it looks like uh, it won for something in Fright Fest London and official selections for Key Empire 2016. When college student Nisa and a group of her friends stumble across an ancient dice game hidden behind a wall in an abandoned World War II factory, they unleash the powerful and deadly demon Knucklebones, who was hell-bent on killing them off one by one. To stop the demon, the kids must finish the game before Knucklebones finishes them. Full of gory fun and fast-paced tension, Knucklebones is a throwback to the best of the 80s era slasher movies. Slasher. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Blu-ray special features never before seen, making the effects featurette on Gotcha SFX and FX Master Robert Short on Halloween. Deleted scenes, Fear House video introduction. So this is not one I've heard of, but I'm actually, uh, sounds kind of interesting really, you know, especially if it's a throwback to 80s stuff. Some of those are done kind of well, especially if they do old school practical effects. So that's what I'm hoping for and that doesn't actually really say. All right, so my next one is going to be Tom Savini's Demonic and Jack Elam's Uninvited. Total Terror double feature, so this has got two movies. In the blink of an eye, the madness begins. All right, I have actually seen Demonic before, and no offense to Tom Savini, but I didn't care for it. Uh, I mean, it just, it really didn't come off well. It was kind of cheesy, and I don't know. It, it was definitely an independent film. But I thought it could have been done better. I was just kind of disappointed and all. I believe they go out to an asylum and they're stuck in the woods. Uh, but the other movie on here, I'm not sure. There's other movies called Uninvited. So, let's see. Oh, it's tiny right now. Sorry. Five teens take a wrong turn in a remote English forest and find their lives in danger. It appears that the forest is in the home of some beautiful but terrifying creatures with a thirst for the victim's blood. As the teens are stalked one by one through the woods, the legend of the forest dwelling monsters is revealed. Tom Savini from Land of the Dead leads a terrifying trip into the darkness of desire. Yeah, they're kind of like a cross. I guess there's some sort of succubus, maybe, or I'm as vampiric, but not really. I mean, it's demonic, so I'm thinking it was kind of more succubus. All right, so Uninvited. Uninvited straddles the lines of horror and Western movie genres. A gold mine on a remote mountaintop draws together eight strangers, all with different backgrounds and reasons for being there. The lure of gold is the only common item between them, the, elect the eclectic group of eight individuals. What they don't know is that the mine was the site of an Indian massacre years earlier, and the spirits of the deceased warriors still haunt the site. So I haven't heard of that one at all. It does not appear to really be any special features on here either. Um, it may be good, I don't know. Like I said, I I know I didn't care for Demonic much. Mill Creek. I actually think we had picked the DVD up in a Goodwill. So, apparently somebody else didn't like it much either. Okay. So there's that one. And, I mean, it's nice to get titles that you don't have or that you want to check out or are interested in. You know, I don't invite a movie. It could be really good. And I'm sure, while Demonic may not have been for me, I'm sure a lot of people may actually really enjoy that one. It did have a lot, you know, it being Savini with the gore and stuff like that, so. Alright, so, oh, Beast on Blu-ray, unrated. Now, this is a great movie, and I actually, my DVD has all three movies, but this being an upgrade to the first movie, the first one really is the best one, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of you probably know what this one is. This one, it, ha it kind of has this start where you think somebody's going to be a main character, and then they kind of get you know, off right away, and you're like, oh, well, they're not the main character. They do this a couple of times, kind of like a psych out, and there's some kind of um, messed up stuff that happens here and there. Uh, you know, not everything's all happy for everybody, and characters that you would think are definitely going to survive, you know, they, <laughs> it's just kind of funny, like, it, it plays with the uh, cliche kind of things that a lot of other movies do, and it's just got this really psycho beast that kind of goes after everybody. Um, and Really, there's something about this cover that always sort of reminded me of the alien with the tongue and it comes out at Sigourney Weaver, you know, in the alien movie. Um, they're Hungry, Your Dinner. From executive producers Wes Craven, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Chris Moore comes the incredible horror extravaganza, Feast, whose production was chronicled in the third season of Bravo's reality series, Project Greenlight. When a motley crew of strangers find themselves trapped in an isolated tavern, 
They must band together in a battle for survival against the family of flesh-hungry creatures. Terrifying and full of surprises, Feast turns the screen blood red as the group is devoured one by one. Directed by first-time filmmaker John Gulliger, the ensemble cast of rising stars includes Balthazar Getty from Alias, Henry Rollins, The Henry Rollins Show, Navi Rawat, The O.C. Numbers, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Josh Zuckerman, Surviving Christmas, Judah Friedlander, MTV 2's Wonder Show, Chosen, Jason Mewes from Clerks 2, Jenny Wade, Rumor Has It, and Krista Allen, HBO's Unscripted. I also know this has Clue Gulliger in it as the bartender, and he's aging. He was in the Return of the Living Dead movie as the guy that owned You Need a Medical Factory, and he's been in a lot of horror movies, really. Um, I believe he's also the father in the second Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Um, but he plays a really good role in this as the bartender. He's kind of, he's a little bit badass, and I'm wondering, uh, he's got the same last name as the first-time director, so there may be a relation there. I don't know. I would have to look that fact up. Balthazar Getty was actually a child actor in Lord of the Flies, which was actually a remake, but it was done in the 90s, and I saw that in the theater, and that movie had a lot of impact. Uh, of course, Henry Rollins, you know, he used to be a black flag, and he's been in a lot of things, including, I believe he was in Sons of Anarchy as part of the group that, uh, well, I don't want to give any spoilers if you haven't seen Sons of Anarchy, Anarchy, but they, they were up to no good. Uh, and Judah Friedlander, I believe, is also in, let's see, it was Cabin Fever 1 or 2, I think. He has a small part in that, maybe, in the factory. And, of course, Jason Mewes from Clark's too. He's in a bunch of them. He's um, Jay of the Jay and Silent Bob pairing that's in a bunch of those, Dogma, stuff like that. So there's actually uh, quite a few recognizable faces in this. And I kind of think Lucas Howes might be in this as well. They don't say this on here, but I'm pretty sure he was in this. And if that if that's so, well, it's either him or it's the other one. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look. It's been a little bit since I watched this one, but I did really like it. This is one of those that has a lot of action all the time. There's not really a lull or dull moment in the movie. And uh, it's a pretty fun one. Those of you who haven't seen it, I would definitely check it out if you like those fast-paced, gory, you know, in-your-face kind of movies and, and things that have a bit of a twist to them and people are just kind of really trying to survive. Um, the special features on this commentary with the filmmakers, a small feast of outtakes, deleted scenes, horror under the spotlight making feast, the blood and guts of Gary Tuncliffe. So it does have a few features on here. And like I said, I did have the DVD that has the other two movies on it as well, but um, and I'll probably hold on to it because, you know, I wouldn't have the sequels otherwise. But it's nice to have this. I would like to see what this is going to look like in Blu-ray, especially if they have uh, upgraded this, you know, from the way it looked on the DVD, because it had a lot of, um, you know, kind of standout scenes in it as it was, so that might really look good on Blu-ray. I haven't seen it on Blu-ray yet. And, of course, it's the unrated version, which is, you know, pretty awesome. You know, who really wants to rate it if they got the option of unrated, right? So, to review, of course, I got Feast Unrated, like I was just talking about. I got... The uh, double feature, so really I got five movies in this pack instead of four. Uninvited and Demonic. One called Knucklebones, which I hadn't heard of. It looks like it might be kind of promising. And Creep Show 2, which is probably my favorite that I got in there. Um, and I'm not seeing, I didn't say anything about special features, but I'm not seeing that there's actually any on here, so there's not special features on this. Again, um, I will maybe tweet about this or update or something whether or not how good this looks because like I said Arrow has put a really good version of this out so I don't know if theirs would blow this away or not I you know in some instances these kind of ones are put out and they look okay but then there's like a really dynamite version come out on blu-ray or something else for instance uh, Scream Factory has a habit of doing some of the titles like Carrie and stuff like that they redo them and then they look just so much better but I'm not disappointed to get that on blu-ray at all because that's one of my favorite uh, I, I always put creep show one and two up in some of my top ten spots most of the time because I just I have a lot of fond memories of those movies plus I actually had the Creepshow magazine and stuff it was I swear to y'all I learned to read to that magazine so alright until next time uh, I will see you again probably with another unpacking I'll probably list some Christmas movies and stuff coming up in December um, I do have some Thanksgiving picks on there and I did do the DVD unboxing already so if y'all want to check some of my other videos out I got plenty of little reviews book reviews stuff like that and uh, I hope you like my unboxings and I hope you check horror pack out if you're interested because well I think they're worthwhile I you know really didn't have any of those 
you know, other than Feast and Creep Show 2, which were upgrades, but I didn't have them on Blu-ray, so really it was like I didn't, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, give me a like and uh, subscribe. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Comment below. Um, my Twitter account is TaraMay79, just like it is here on YouTube, T-A-R-A-M-A-E-7-9. So if y'all would like to um, ask me any questions or anything about what I got, that's fine. You know, I'll answer. So, uh, have a good afternoon or morning, whichever time you watch this video. And uh, see you next time.